Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, local and state authorities gather to raise awareness on elder abuse. Council President Nancy Florine receives a prestigious award. And later, we take you to the county corrections facility for a graduation. But we begin at a press event with Executive Ike Leggett and Prince George's County Executive Russian Baker, where both highlighted the Pepco merger benefits. The merger is done, and both county executives express to be pleased with the benefits that Pepco customers will receive in both counties. For Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett, the top priority was fewer and shorter power outages during winter and summer storms. This is the essence of why I look forward for the merger because you now have a very large corporation that can utilize resources far better, more flexible, and ensure us that we have the kind of resources on the ground. So we have greater liability, uh, we have greater resources that can attack the problems here within the state of Maryland. As part of the deal, if Pepco does not meet higher standards of reliability, the company can face significant financial penalties. Pepco is investing millions in both counties, starting with a bill credit of $50 this month for all residential customers, and a second $50 credit in the next 12 months. Also, giving almost $3 million for workforce development in both counties. Now with the deal being uh, struck with the District of Columbia, we in Prince George's County are glad that we get the most favored nation's status and we're going to see some more benefits coming to us. Uh, jobs for our kids in the summer, which is very important to us in Prince George's County, rebates for our uh, residents. Uh, so this is what we expected from this merger and we expect uh, a great corporate citizen in the future. Pepco is creating a $14 million green energy fund. We're providing the counties with over $14 million for a green sustain sustainability fund. And it's our expectation that the county will use that um, to help spur uh, increased uh, investments in renewable energy for customers more broadly than just the government, but as well as other customers. For more information on the Pepco Exxon merger, visit fightomorrow.com. The sixth annual World Elder Abuse Awareness Day took place this week. State and local officials came together to raise awareness about elder abuse, neglect, and exploitation with an emphasis on online scams. Abuse of the elderly is a growing phenomenon both nationally and in Montgomery County. The workshop took place at Holiday Park Senior Center and part of the program included safeguard tips against cybercrime. Any type of abuse, financial or we will try to help them and here is a venue for information for them to identify resources, get to know the players, who they can call, who they can go to, all the different resources available to them and then be aware of different schemes out there because many times they fall victim on schemes that are well known to many of us who have been using computers for a very long time. In Montgomery County, the 60 and over population is about 18.5% of the county's total population. For information about county senior services, go to montgomerycountymd.gov slash HHS and click on Older Adult Services. The Quicken Loans National Tournament will be held at Congressional Country Club in Bethesda from June 20th through the 26th. County departments and agencies have been working on free tournament arrangements to help spectators to get to and from the tournament. Here is a list of parking locations. County officials remind anyone planning to attend the tournament that if driving, they must use one of the official tournament parking and shuttle lots. For more information, go to qlnational.com. Coming up on County Report this week, Council President Nancy Florine is named Legislator of the Year. And the City of Rockville celebrates its public safety finest. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County Government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. 
The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Dozens of Bethesda residents turn out for a community meeting held at Walt Whitman High School to push for safety improvements at the intersection of River Road and Brayburn Parkway, the site of a tragic accident that killed three Whitman community family members. First, I would like to hold a moment of silence for the parents and the principal of Walt Whitman High School holds a moment of silence in honor of three Whitman community family members who lost their lives in a fatal accident earlier this year at the intersection of River Road and Brayburn Parkway at a community meeting to discuss safety improvements for what residents say is a dangerous intersection. What the state has proposed is not meaningful. It's incremental and it won't, won't help things. Um, and it's very frustrating to me that uh, it's something that uh, of this magnitude can't has to be dealt with in such a bureaucratic way. In fact, the Maryland State Highway Administration has presented the community with four concept plans that would modify the median and left turn regulations for the intersection. But residents say more needs to be done. I think the proposals um, to date are inadequate because the intersection is extremely dangerous and what we need there is a light and we probably need the intersection redesigned so that the light can um, protect both people taking a left turn off River Road and also people coming from the Bannockburn um, School District. Well I'm glad they made some suggestions because in 2008 they didn't make any suggestions that were more concrete than putting down some paint. So I like the fact that they're th taking it seriously but after this meeting it's clear they need to take it even more seriously and, and reconsider the, a traffic light. The objective of the meeting really was to hear from the community and we heard. We need to um, approach this at different levels of abstraction. So we need to take this as an idea or concept on our part back to SHA and then discuss all of the related issues such as timing, um, cost, uh, transition. In Bethesda, I'm Maureen Chaudhary for County Report This Week. The Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce has named County Council President Nancy Florine as Legislator of the Year. Florine was honored at the Chamber's 57th Annual Dinner Celebration at the Bethesda North Marriott. I'm very honored. I'm very pleased. Uh, it's nice to be recognized. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time uh, worrying about the needs of our business community and really trying to make that an, an integral part of who I am and how this county moved forward. And uh, it's great to celebrate that with them tonight. Several of Rockville's public safety officers who went above and beyond the call of duty were honored during the 27th Annual Public Safety Awards. Rock 11's Willie James Enum has a story. Rockville's service organizations and Chamber of Commerce took time to honor those who helped make our community great and go above and beyond the call of duty at the 27th Annual Public Safety Awards. It's a great honor to recognize these men and women that provide service to the community day in, day out. And it's a great time just to hear their stories and recognize the great work they do. Six Rockville police officers were honored during the event at the Lakewood Country Club. Officer Brandon Thomas, who received the Distinguished Service Citation for his efforts to apprehend a suspected carjacker, says it's just part of what he does to keep the city safe. I'm honored to serve here in the city of Rockville and, and, and serve along the great men and women that I serve with. There's approximately 57 officers in the city of Rockville, and, and each one of us do great work. And former Rockville Police Chief Terry Treshek may have retired recently, but his decades of work hasn't gone unnoticed as he received the first ever Lifetime Achievement Award. Officers weren't the only ones to receive awards. A Good Samaritan was recognized for his bravery in assisting with the capture of a suspect on the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. When things happen to people in our community, we can't just stand around and watch. You know, we have to look out for one another in our community. This year, 23 members of Rockville's public safety agencies and two civilians were honored. In all, 518 awards have been presented to members of Rockville's public safety agencies, civilians, and canine partners since the beginning of the public safety awards back in 1990. For County Report This Week, I'm Willie James Inman.
Coming up on County Report this week, we take you to an elementary school where Skype plays a role in Spanish language immersion. And Montgomery College celebrates its annual graduation at the County Correctional Facility. Don't go away, County Report this week is coming right back. History comes alive during Heritage Days weekend, June 25th and 26th. Discover Montgomery County's historical treasures during this free countywide event. The two-day festival offers visitors an opportunity to sample numerous sites representing the history, culture, and natural beauty of Montgomery County. So join us for Heritage Days, June 25th from noon to 4 p.m. all over Montgomery County. For more information, call 301-515-0753 or go to heritagemontgomery.org. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, Nelly containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Avergilli. With the use of Skype, fifth graders at Rock Creek Forest Elementary School are broadening their perspective of world geography and learning about diverse communities, and they're having fun too. MCPS TV reports. No. At Rock Creek Forest Elementary School, fifth grade students are practicing a creative way to learn geography, languages, and history by using the online communications tool Skype to connect with students from a class somewhere else in the world. My kids are in the Spanish immersion, so it was a great way for them to practice Spanish. Also, they learn how to use better the maps, how to use like the Google Maps with the Chromebooks, looking for like clues and like searching. Like at the same time, they're asking questions and they're like filtering their responses. I think there's a lot of skills involved. Called Mystery Skype, students use clues to discover the location, which makes geography come to life and helps integrate them into a global community of learners. A Mystery Skype is where our class, our teacher sets up a Skype with a class somewhere else in the world. We try and guess where they live before they guess where we live using only yes or no questions. Wisconsin. No, no estamos in Wisconsin. They realized after the first or the second time that asking good questions was really important to be the winners of the activity. What I like about the Mystery Skype is that it's an adventure and you can because it can be anywhere in the world and then you figure it out and it's like, whoa, they're from all the way over there. I was the one who guessed the country and the city. Um, it was Antofagasta. They were from Chile, so the Chile part was from my group because um, we heard their accent. Students lead the activity, designating tasks to groups and working in teams. They use technology to journey around the world and learn about different communities. I think like for the kids it's really about like this um, awareness about how people live in, in different parts of the world. What I liked about the students from Chile was we got to learn their lifestyle and how they live in their school and how their calendar works. It impressed me that they had to wear uniforms. Our class likes to share facts about where we live and then the other class shares facts about where they live. So I feel like I'm learning but at the same time I'm having fun. In the recently approved FY17 budget, the county awarded grants to multiple community organizations that are providing resources and services to its residents. AA LEAD is a nonprofit organization that provides low income, underdeserved Asian American youth a positive outlet. Crystal Park has a story. Asian American LEAD is a youth development organization. We've been around since 1998. In Montgomery County, we're serving youth middle school, high school, and we just launched a program at Community College. We are supporting low-income and underserved Asian Pacific American youth with educational empowerment, identity development, and leadership opportunities, and we do that through after-school programs, summer programs, and mentoring programs. 
there are a lot of stereotypes that surround our Asian American community and assuming that all of our children uh, don't have any struggles just because they're Asian American. And that's not real. Um, not all of our children come here with the same resources or the same backgrounds. And just as we see other children struggle uh, in our school system, we have to provide them the support that's necessary. We want to be able to create an opportunity for young people to have services after school that they wouldn't otherwise be able to. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> There's a lot of research out there about how difficult it is for young people who don't have anything to do, how much easier it is for them to be drawn into negative activities. My parents don't get home until like 8 o'clock or something, and that that's a a lead is a way for me to spend time with new people and get to know more people. I think that the biggest thing that AA Lead does is create a safe space for youth. The AA Lead is a family and our youth refer to AA Lead as a family where they can be themselves and develop friendships and be recognized for all of the different parts of their identity. It's helped me gain confidence and helped me have build the confidence to talk in front of people and make more friends. A Lead has uh, brought me so much, and I don't know what I would do without it. And if this were to, you know, stop me with money, uh, I don't know what would happen. Montgomery County Libraries is kicking off its annual Summer of Reading program with new programs. The Aspen Hill branch manager has the details. This year, uh, we have designed the program for all ages, so we have a program set up for uh, children, teens, and adults. We are not going with our traditional program where kids had to read a number of books or read for a number of minutes. This year, we have included activities to include things where they would read and also learn to help prevent summer slide. I think it's a great way for our kids to continue to learn during the summer. Sarah loves to read and it's a great way for us to also talk about the books. She's learning so much through her reading um, and it's a great program. Register by visiting any branch or online at montgomerycountymd.gov slash library. A group of MCPS elementary school students from Title I schools discovered what it means to be a scientist. Here is the story. More than 20 students and their families took an evening field trip to Emergent Biosolutions in Gaithersburg to experiment and explore careers in science. Yes, I'm really curious and I'm actually really excited because I really want to know what, what I'm going to learn today. We're very excited to have the Montgomery County Public Schools come in to our site here in Gaithersburg to learn a little bit about what we do as a company, um, learn a little bit about science, and hopefully get them excited about science so they will find a career path in that direction. This is a great opportunity for the whole family to learn about opportunities in science and math in terms of careers so that not only are there opportunities at schools, but families can continue to seek out new opportunities for their kids in the community. Families and students who attended also enjoyed a light dinner provided by the MCPS Division of Food and Nutrition and Title I Services. During the evening, students participated in a variety of interactive activities. We brought in um, licorice and gummy bears to make DNA molecules. Can't go wrong with candy. Um, and hopefully as they're doing it, they'll learn a little bit about the science behind it and remember it. I'm learning that actually, I never knew this, but DNA samples connect find that make cool. Another investigation allowed students to understand the science behind the making of ice cream. The science part of it is when we add the salt to the ice to make it more colder so the ice cream will freeze while we shake it. I think I might be a chemist when I grow up. This is a great partnership between the school and, and private industry to show the kids exactly you know, what, what, what goes on in the workplace, uh, how science really works in the real world. Being in this building is cool because we get to learn about science. This is fun because I'm learning about cool science things. This, this event is awesome! The Montgomery County Corrections Facility has another year of graduates walking the stage instead of the line, thanks to the partnership with Montgomery College. Here's a story. Friends and family are celebrating the 2016 Model Learning Center commencement. 
at the Montgomery County Correction Facility. What you saw today were, were eight individuals that came and seized education. We're providing them the opportunity. We give them nothing. We give them opportunity, but they seize the moment to, to grab their education and, and to make it a reality for them. Graduating inmates were greeted with a decorated facility and a number of Montgomery College officials. The college entered a new partnership with the correctional facility to provide inmates the opportunity to study a myriad of subjects, from digital literacy to earning a GED. Since January and a new partnership that we've entered into, we have GED, ESOL, digital literacy, food service classes, and we're able to offer a lot more education to the students. This year's valedictorian, Anton Powell, took to the stage to give his inspiring story of how his determination culminated in the taking of the first step to his dream. It's a special moment, you know, moment I'll never be able to forget. You know, uh, I'm truly, my loved ones are truly proud of me, man. You know, I just got a business card here, so it definitely opens some doors. This is so critically important to me to see students like Anton who is going to walk across that bridge to Montgomery College. He has indicated through his focus and his determination that he wants to make something of himself. Montgomery College has been aiding inmates in this facility for the past 10 years and will continue to grow the program to help further the opportunity for education. It takes great people like Dr. Somersault to make it happen. Watching this all unfold and thinking about my, my friend retiring, I wanted to tell you your legacy was sitting in front of you, and it was a pretty amazing thing. For County Report This Week, I'm James McLean. Coming up on County Report This Week, Canadian geese are multiplying fast, and the county is getting ready for a roundup. And with the 4th of July celebrations around the corner, we give you fireworks safety tips. Stay with us. Looking for a way to get around downtown Silver Spring? Hop on the Route 28 Van Gogh Free Circulator. The Route 28 Van Gogh Free Circulator provides rides Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to midnight and Friday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Fast, convenient, and free. There's no better way to get around downtown. To find out more information about the Route 28 Van Gogh Free Circulator, including route information, visit us online or dial 311. A Zika virus prevention tip from the Maryland Department of Agriculture. Mosquitoes can exploit the tiniest pools of standing water in your yard and ruin your summer fun. Check your yard every week and dump water out of any containers you see. Buckets, cans, bottles, coolers, bird baths, even wheelbarrows and especially saucers under flower pots. Store items upside down when not in use or better yet inside. Learn more at mda.maryland.gov slash Zika. Welcome back to County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. Montgomery County is moving forward with a roundup of hundreds of Canada geese from two local parks this summer. My MC Media's Sonia Burke reports. <laughs> hundreds of Canada geese call Montgomery County home, but at two local parks, these birds are now considered a nuisance. The geese like to feed on grassy areas, including these ballpark fields. And then there's what they leave behind all of their droppings. Um, it's not only unsightly, but it's, you know, potential health hazard. Park officials are moving forward with a plan to remove 300 non-migratory geese from Martin Luther King Jr. Park and Rock Creek Regional Park this summer. We're taking the next step, which is a roundup. And a roundup is essentially during the, the geese, uh, their flightless period, when they're unable to fly, they molt their feather, the feathers in uh, the middle of the summer. And while they're flightless, you can essentially kind of corral them into a localized fence, like a tentative uh, temporary fence. And from there, uh, they're loaded into crates and taken off site. Officials say the geese will then be transferred to a location where they will be humanely euthanized and processed for food that will be donated to the Maryland Food Bank. Well, this is the first time we've used this management tool. So it's a, it's a new tactic for us, but it's one that's been shown to be effective throughout the region. And, um, and we're hoping for the same results here. Janet Kearns often walks her dog at Martin Luther King Jr. Park, where she enjoys watching the geese year round. The highlight of the season is watching the babies and watching how fast they grow. So we actually just 
look forward to it. And even in the winter, they tend to stay here in the winter and um, they're, they're fun to watch. Anytime someone can have a close encounter with wildlife, it's exciting. I mean, myself included, uh, but people just need to know that they're best left at arm's length and, and you're not helping them by feeding them. So if there is one thing parks officials want you to remember, it's do not feed the geese. In White Oak, I'm Sonia Burke for County Report This Week. The 20 City Proof is Possible Tour stopped in the city of Tacoma Park recently, where TV and film personalities Corbett and Grace Lunsford offered anyone interested a tour of their tiny home. Folks that weren't here missed a tour of a tiny home. It's a demonstration home that is actually being lived in by Corbett Lunsford and his wife Grace Lunsford and their three-month-old daughter and two cats. They live in it full time, and we offered residents the opportunity to tour the tiny home every night, 5 to 6 p.m. this week. The tiny home is really just a way to bring people in and get them interested and talk about high-performing homes. And that means that if they can do it in this tiny home, you can do it in your home right here in Tacoma Park. You can make your home as energy efficient as possible with the best indoor air quality that you can get. I think people are generally really excited to see a tiny house on wheels and actually step inside one. Obviously there's some curiosity uh, seekers that are interested in it. Not everybody wants to live in a tiny house, but everybody's heard of one and they've seen them on TV. So that's one thing. And also they're generally really floored when they step inside my house and they hear that it's the quietest house that they've ever been inside. It's one of the most comfortable. My air conditioner, which is a Mitsubishi ductless mini split, makes zero noise. It's very clean smelling inside, even though I've got two cats. So we've got a litter box obviously somewhere in there and they're always looking for it. Uh, so I think all of the features and the systems that we very finely tuned in the tiny lab are impressive to people because they do get that it is a house like their house, even though it's built very differently. All of the things are totally applicable so that when they go home, they think, wait, why is my house not like that? As you can see, it is raining cats and dogs, and everyone is so excited to tour the tiny home that they are standing there in line in this downpour. That just speaks volumes about how cool it is to have a tiny home in Tacoma Park and to have a super performing home for residents to tour. As we count down to the 4th of July, it is important to remember that it is illegal to possess or discharge fireworks in Montgomery County. Here's Captain John Feisner of the Montgomery County Fire Department with more. It is confusing to our community respective to the use of fireworks. And this is in part because jurisdictions around us have different requirements than Montgomery County, Maryland. But I want to be clear, the use of fireworks in Montgomery County is illegal. Uh, it is illegal to store, to sell, to discharge, to dispose uh, in any way, shape, or form any firework uh, in this county. Here's some footage that shows some of the dangers of fireworks. But again, for the viewer, we want to make sure that everyone knows that all fireworks in Montgomery County are illegal. Every July 4th, the county sponsors a variety of fireworks displays throughout the county. We encourage our community to go visit one of those displays to ensure a safe and a compliant uh, community event. Now it is time to meet our pet of the week. Catherine Zanzano joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine Zanzano. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator here at the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center. I'm here with Mrs. Elmo. She's a three-year-old terrier mix and she's available for adoption. She's a wonderful dog and she's just as goofy as can be, but also just loves to be near you and snuggle. So she'd be a great dog for a family that loves to go out and do fun things, but then also just be at home and, and hang out with their dog too. So we're hoping that somebody will come by and visit her and, and take her home with them. You can visit Mrs. Elmo and other available animals at www.montgomerycountymd.gov ASD. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. 
Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili and thank you for watching.